Hey guys, Michael Bullshat. Got a hot topic for you today. Today, we in this video, we are going to talk about God baits, specifically shy God baits. Everything you want to know about God baits and then some, especially all God bait. What I want to talk to you about is since we've had, had a lot of questions, there's also some videos out there by other guys. I wanted to make an official Bullshat God bait video um, to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And when you go to our video page, you got the God bait video there. Um, but this is our eight inch bullshag glide bait. Um, if you notice, just like our gill glide, we have the pin popping out. And we have that for a reason. The reason allows you to tune the bait to your specifications, not only for the rate of fall, but also the action of the bait. This is, this, there's only, there, there's not many baits out there that allows you to tune your baits differently. A lot, of, a lot of glide baits out there, when you get it, you're stuck with that rate of fall, or you're stuck with that particular action. I wanted something more versatile. You know, everybody has different uh, feelings on how fast a glide should sink, and what kind of action you should get out of your glide. Some people like choppy baits. Some people like smooth, wide glides. Some people like baits to fall faster. Some people like baits to barely float or barely sink or suspend. The good thing is you can do all of that with this bait. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and give you a few fishing tips on it. But like I said, you have our pin sticking out. This allows you to take some pliers and pop the pin out and let you access the tuning chamber and the screws to allow you to mess with your bait and, and, and tune it the way you want. Um, one thing before I go any further, make sure that if you have the bait painted by somebody, that you explain to the painter that you want this sticking out when they clear coat it. Some people use epoxy. I recommend you don't use an epoxy. I recommend you use some kind of a thin clear coat automotive uh, but if that's pushed in and you epoxy over, going to be a bugger to tune your glide. I would also recommend you swimming the glide a little bit before you do it as well, just to make sure you're happy with it. But anyway, popping the pin out super easy, grab fire, boom, dump, allows you to get to the tuning chamber. The tuning chamber allows you to adjust the weight of the bait so that it sinks at the desired rate of fall that you prefer. Living here in Georgia, I tuned it in my I tuned every bait in my test tank to be very, very, very close to suspending or super slow fall, maybe barely, barely float. Um, it would take minuscule amount of weight, like fractions of a split shot, to change it uh, in my tank. The reason why I do that is because I ship baits all over the world. If I shipped a bait to New Hampshire, it's going to have colder water. It's going to have make, make that bait a tendency to float more. If I send it to Miami or anywhere California or any of the hotter states, it's going to make that bait fall faster. So essentially, the way the thing, the rate of fall thing works with baits is the hotter the water, the bait your bait's going to sink faster. The colder the water, the bait's going to float. A lot of people, what they do is when they buy two baits, they have a summer and they have a winter bait hottest in time of the month and the coldest time of the month. That way they don't have to sit there and alternate one bait weight, pulling weight out, stuffing weights. All right, it's very simple. I will say, well, I could, a lot of people say, well, I could just add a next size hook up and get this sucker to sink. You add the next size hook up on this, your bait becomes an extra slow sink. If your bait is an extra slow sink as it is, or a barely floater, and you add the next size hooks on this, you have a very fast sink bait. This bait is extremely, most glide baits and all, are very extremely weight sensitive. All right? It usually takes fractions of a split shot to tune these baits. Matter of fact, I usually cut these in half a lot of times to get the desired rate of fall that I want. Um, you can get them at Walmart, anywhere. The ones that have the little split down the middle, this makes it easy. Chop it in half, shove it in there, drop it in your water and see how it does and then keep adjust it that way. Um, so basically, the best way to get the best glide out of your bait is to get your bait to barely almost suspend. Because what happens is, is it, it allows it to do all this, all your motion is sideways. 
And if it's, if it stinks too fast, it's going to want to do this number. You're not going to get the widest guy that you want. Widest guy might not be important to you. That's fine. But I'm, if you want to get the widest guy, you want your bait to almost suspend in the water. Okay. Keep in mind, you also have the weight of the line that's under the line under the water. You also have what I found a lot of times is the um, you need to give the bait time to acclimate to the water temperature. What I mean by acclimate is is the bait is hot and out, but if you put it in the water, which is colder than the air on most occasions, it get, it changes the temperature and it also changes the rate of fall. So if you get a bait and it barely floats, I bet you money after about 10, 20 minutes of fishing, it will probably be a super slow sink. So let the bait acclimate to the water temperature before you go haywire on changing the rate of fall. So basically, as I said, you pull the pin, you take the tuning chamber, you put weight in there. You can put anything in there, super glue or whatever. What I do is I put super glue in there and then put it in some water and it cures instantly. It looks a little rough, but it keeps it in place and it does a very good job. Um, and then I see what the rate of fall is. If I need to take more weight out, I take this split shot and I split it in half or quarter. Put it back in there, super glue it, check it again. Now, if it, floats too, if it sinks too fast, the cool thing is, is the hole is already drilled for you. All you have to do is the lead is right here. There's three, there's a couple of places that there's lead, but this is the tuning lead right here. So as soon as you drill through here, you're hitting lead. And that will take lead out of your bait to cause your bait to float more. Okay? This is what gives you, this was what separates our bait from a lot of others. You're not stuck with one rate of fall. If you're selling your bait because the rate of fall sucks, you didn't tune your bait to the rate to your water temperature that you have. Okay? Then you can cut complete customability of the rate of fall. You can make it a heavy fast sink, you can make it a super floater, you can make it an extra slow sink, you can make it a suspender. You could do anything you want rate of fall wise with this bait by utilizing the, the tuning chamber. <clears throat> now, another thing that you can do with our bait is change the action. If you sink two screw wires here, before you even touch that, before you even mess with anything, what I try to do, and I try to remember, and I admit I do forget some of these times, I hand tune them by eye. Basically what I do is I make sure the tail segment hits the head at the same spot on each side. You can see really carefully that that head touches the joint here, but when you do this, it's inside the joint. This bait is going to cause it to tune. It's going to not swim a little bit further to one side than the other. The simple way to easily tune this bait is to bend, ow, bend the segments by hand, bend it away from you, and then check it so that it hits the uh, head at the same spot. All I did was tweak the joints. I'm like tearing a phone book in half. Don't do anything else. That is the ultimate way to tune a jive bait, to make sure that it hits the same spot every time. Your angle should be pretty close to the same. Now, I mean, not perfect, but very close. Okay, so that's the first thing I do. Swim in the boat. If you like to swim, don't do nothing. Usually, I try to tune my baits. I have it at the setting where it's very close to the widest glide you can get. Okay, now, a general rule of thumb. The more you go inward with the, with the screw eyes, you screw them inward, the wider your glide. It's also going to be the longer the glide, too. In other words, it's going to, to, to complete a glide, it's going to be this distance. If you had the screw eyes in more, you can complete more glides in half the distance. So it's sharper turns when the screw eyes are out. Wide longer turns when the screw eyes are in. Okay? So it depends on what you want. Get it set in your head what you want. If you want smooth, wide glides, Either keep it where it's at. If you want it a little bit wider, try to move these screw eyes in 180 degrees, maybe even 360 degrees. Okay? When you put the glide back together, when you do 180, your glide bait is going to be out of tune because you just tuned it because your screw eyes are, are not quite centered. So now your bait is out of whack. You're going to have to retune these, the segments, so that the head 
hits the tail, the tail hits the head at the same spot. Okay? On 180 turns, you have to retune it. On 360 turns, you should not have to retune it. So if you want to do half turns, that's fine. Just make sure that you retune your bait so that the tail hits the head in the same spot. Swim the bait. Keep in mind, you can come in, you can screw those screw eyes in too much. You will get a horrible swim if it's in too much. What I do is screw them in until my bait doesn't swim right, then start backing out a half turns at a time until it gives me what I want as far as the widest guide. You're gonna get a different shape burn as well. You're gonna get a different shape at slow retrieve as well. You can get any, almost any kind of retrieve you want messing with these in and out of the screw eyes. What I would highly recommend is if you push this one in one half turn, 180 degrees, you do the same with this one and vice versa, outward. So if you want to do a choppy, really sharp turns, which is what a lot of people like nowadays, you want to put these things outward. There's three or four turns, you know, half turns. So basically two, two full turns. So, and that will give you a sharper, more mechanical glide, you know, if you can work it like a jerk bait type glide. So that is what you could do. And I'm gonna show you in the tank two completely different actions out of the same bait. I'm gonna show you one that glides pretty wide. And then the next one, I'm gonna back the screw eyes, screw eyes out several turns, and I'm gonna get the chop jerk bait type stuff. So that is what you're gonna do with a little bit of it. So my point is, is you can get anything you want out of this glide if you put your mind to it and tune it the way you want. I did this to give you uh, maneuverability and being able to change the bait, get the bait to do what you want it to do. Most sky baits you buy, you're stuck. You can't change the screws, you can't pop the pin, you can't alter the weight. With this one, you can. You pop the weight, you can change whatever you want as far as the action and as far as the drain rate of fall. Okay? So, uh, a lot of people ask me if I use snaps. I don't use snaps. The only reason I use snaps in my shop is because it just keeps me from tying 500 baits, as many baits as we tune in the shop. Um, I use a snap and I don't even close it. I just pitch it in my tank and I swim it and go from there. I prefer not tying directly to the line. You can use a snap, you can use a slit ring, whatever you want. Okay guys, basically I have a white bait here so that you can see the tank with a black bottom. Um, I have a regular glide bait. Um, right out of stock, I turned the screw eyes in 360 degrees to get the widest glide I get. Um, again, most of the time I have it about, about 360, so give or take a 360 degrees or 180 degree turn inward will give you close to what I have here. It's a completely wide glide um, and it gives you a different action. So this is the screws inward. This is the same bait. What I've done is from stock levels, I've adjusted this out to 360 degree turns. This will give you a choppier jerk bait type action. This is what a lot of people talk about, you know, fishing it like a jerk bait. This is what they do. It gives you a different action. It's a, it's a very short glide, but it's choppy and it's rapid fire. Um, and this is what they did. It's the same exact bait. I just moved the, the, the screws outward two full 360 degree turns. And then I made sure that the tail hits the head at the same spot. I always do that to make sure that you make the right adjustments when you move the, when you move the screws. So here we go.
Another little tip I want to show you with gob bait fishing that I've learned over the years is called sidestep. What you can do is you can make a pitch or a cast to a dock and actually steer the bait up under the dock without actually having to cast under it. It's also great for me if you made an errant cast, you float way past the item, you could steer it towards a lay down, you could steer it towards a stick up or stomp, you can actually steer it up under brush, under overhangs and stuff. It's a very, very useful uh, technique to use uh, when fish are tight to cover and you're able to get a cast precisely where you want it without actually risking hanging up the bait. You can steer it towards it precisely how you want it to do by cutting off the glide and making it glide left or right. So what I'm going to do in this tank is I'm going to pass in the top left hand corner and I'm going to bring it to the right hand side acting at the right hand side as a dock. And I'm going to try to show you how I can bump into that right hand side purposely to be able to get that bait up under a, an amateur a dock uh, acting as the right hand side of the tank. This cast I'm going to the right side and then hitting the left. That's how you steer a bait from right to left. You can alternate your half, your, 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 your left or right glide and just make your primary right or left glide your primary glide and be able to steer it wherever you want to get under whatever you need it to do. Yeah.